There are three areas that I would like to highlight as central to transport decarbonisation. Firstly, we need to reduce the need to travel. Digitalisation has revolutionised the way that we participate in the economy, a trend which has been greatly accelerated by COVID-19. The Chancellor's forthcoming green stimulus package may be better focused on investing in broadband than building new roads. Secondly, mass transit will continue to play an important role, but we need a wholesale reform of appraisal whose existing conditions favour car travel. New developments in urban centres well connected by public transport can stimulate 50% more economic growth than equivalent developments located at the fringe. A 10% improvement in public transport connectivity is associated with a 3.6% reduction in social deprivation. Finally, we need a total reformulation of transport pricing. How can it be cheaper to fly from London to Edinburgh than to catch the train, when emissions per passenger kilometre for air travel is 10 times that of rail travel? And the failure of road taxation to cover externalities means that we overconsume roads. The freeze in fuel duty since 2011 has caused 5% more traffic and additional 5 million tonnes of CO2 emissions. Through our presidency of COP26 and our hosting of the G7 next year, we should lead efforts to establish a strong, predictable and rising carbon price and to encourage carbon pricing at the border.